So recently, all over Twitter, there was a tweet saying that 60% of a Gen Z would rather spend on experiences so like concerts and movies and other stuff instead of saving for retirement. On popular opinion, I actually think it's the complete opposite and Gen Z's are actually having a rough time in the short term, but in the long scheme of things in terms of retirement, they're actually doing better than all the other generations. Firstly, let's talk about the short term problems that Gen Z's face and what we can do to make sure that we don't fall into this. And that major thing is actually credit card debt. 53% of Gen Z actually rely on credit cards for day-to-day -day living expenses. And the APR of credit cards right now is at 20.33, literally the highest since 1991. Moreover, from the ages of 18 to 29, they are the highest rate of people that are behind on their credit card payments. 8.8% were at least 90 days behind on their payments. And the sad reality is this is actually up 8.5% from the previous quarter. Moreover, the student loans payments will start in October and 46% of people are not sure how they're gonna pay these debts off. Therefore, we'll rely on more credit cards and other lines of credit to pay for not only student loans, but everyday expenses. One major thing that Gen Z's deal with is actually impulse buying. 51% of people cannot say no, even when they know that they are impulse buying. Social media and showing how our life might be better as compared to our peers or buying something that we really don't need just to appeal to more people to show that you're rich even when you're not rich is really contributing to the finances of Gen Z. And the sad reality is even when they're flexing on social media, 77% of Gen Z and millennials need to depend on their parents for some expenses. Now, the solution. What is the solution? First and foremost, if you are into credit card debt, you have to get out of it ASAP, especially right now with these interests that are on your loans. It's too high and it's just not worth it. So you definitely need to scale back and aggressively pay down these credit card debts. And if you are using these credit cards for your day-to-day -day living expenses. Either you have to reduce your living expenses somewhere, cut back on subscriptions, something, or you need to look for a second job or a side hustle at this point, which is all honestly extremely sad, extremely sad. Now, once you are out of debt, a lot of us believe that we need to travel now. Why wait in the future? What if we don't even live in the future? Or what if our health is not at, at its peak for us to travel. So a lot of us do want to travel, same with me. Like I want to work, I want to invest, but also at the same time, I really want to travel. I feel like if I don't travel now, when the hell am I supposed to travel? This is where I really like Ramit Sethi. He says that you should spend more on things you love and cut back on things that you're okay with. Like if you really want to travel, you should spend your money there because that gives you happiness but on things that you really don't care about. Like for example, maybe you need to start cooking more at home and reduce the amount of times you eat out. Instead of having Amazon, Netflix, and all of these subscriptions, cut back on some of them. Like even if you do small, small things, it will have a big impact. See where you're spending money on a monthly basis and where you can cut, cut down so that you can still spend money on your experiences or things that you love. That way you will definitely have a more balanced life as opposed to just thinking that I just need to save all my money for retirement. You lose that drive. And I don't think that's a good way to live and also not a good way for your finances because eventually you just burn out. Like you just don't see a, a light at the end of the tunnel. You just don't think it's worth it. And another thing I like is delayed gratification. Since so many Gen Zs can't say no to an impulse purchase. I would definitely say that keep the the product or whatever that you're looking for in your cart for one week. Do you remember it after one week that you wanted this product? Then you honestly really, really don't need it. Actively think about, I usually think about if I really, really want something, then what is the impact of this product in my life? Like, will I just use it once? Will I just post about it once? Because I usually think of money as working capital for me. 
if I use my capital somewhere else, what is that giving to me? Is it really worth it? Maybe I can cut back for now and then think about it later. Do I really, is this product really giving me happiness? These are all some of the questions I usually ask myself. And these are not fun questions. When I always think about this, I'm like, what? Like, I work so hard, I can't even afford this. But you always have to think about working capital. This $1 that you invest today will be so many more dollars in the future. So I think of it in a more positive light as opposed to a negative light and that what you see on social media is not real. It's just a highlight of somebody's life. And sometimes when you see it, you feel like, how is everybody else so much ahead? But clearly so many people are in debt. So many Americans live paycheck to paycheck and it's just not realistic. People are probably going into so much debt. Credit card debt has hit 1 trillion, which is so much. And with all these interest rates, like Americans are actually being crushed into debt. And instead of you looking rich, you rather be rich. You know that you're rich. It is, it is good for you. If you internally compare to yourself, it's a never ending battle. Like bro, billionaires, there's one billionaire that's more richer than the other one. Like there's comparison going on over it at that level. Like there's never satisfaction. Like there's no satisfaction to greed and no satisfaction to how you feel when you look at somebody else's success. You definitely always feel that you are not doing enough. So finances is an internal ba battle. You're not supposed to, uh, nobody's gonna know how much money you have in the bank, but that is actually true wealth. And this is really hard to understand and it's really sad when you see your peers doing the things that you've always wanted to do, trust, I see it all the time. It's not fun. Okay, so finally, yes, Gen Zs are dealing with credit card debt and yes, they're relying more on their parents, which is not ideal. But on the other hand, they are actually the generation that is that will be the most prepared for retirement ever, which is all amazing. A survey found that 80% of Gen Z actually started investing before the age of 21. It is extremely important to start early even if you're investing smaller amounts. As you can see in this graph, if you started investing at 25, by the time you are 65, you will have less than 500,000. And if you put that similar amount at 35, you will have a little bit more than 200k so it is a big big difference and even if you started at 40 and you double the amount if you have been invested at 25 it is still less than five hundred thousand dollars it is just around 350k so you can see the importance of starting early and if so many gen z's have started investing early on in their life that is absolutely amazing and they're definitely the most on track for retirement and also more and more people believe that when we get to retirement, there will be no pension. Like we literally need to save for our own retirement and have that planned. We cannot rely on the government because even if the government will give us money, it is not sufficient to pay for our everyday expenses. As you can see, Gen Z is 65% ready for retirement. And whereas for millennials and Gen Z, you're looking at 45 to 54% readiness for retirement. So recently in 2019, we had some data on the average retirement money that people have right now. From the ages of 65 to 74, they have around $426,000. And for ages 75 and older, they have $357,000. And these are well below the $1 million mark. If you have $1 million saved, and pretend you live till the age of 80, 89, which is actually pretty average, and you take away 4%, that is around $50,000 or forty-eight dollars to $50,000 that you can spend on a yearly basis for your everyday living expenses, which is really, really great. And to have less than half a million dollars is actually sadly not sufficient. So for Gen Zs to start earlier in their life and for 20% of them, to be using their 401ks and actively putting in 14% of their income. It means that they will be more than ready for retirement and definitely be closer to the $1 million mark than the people that are having money in their retirement today. So all in all, yes, in the short term, it definitely feels like Gen Z's 
uh, don't have a good time. We're dealing with high student loans, high housing. We're dealing with high inflation and overall living expenses. And we have to sadly depend a lot more on our parents than older generations. But the key is to know your finances, have a budget, and spend money on things that you like and just reduce the spending of money on other things that are not that really important to you. And the good thing is that due to social media and the awareness that eventually there will be no pension for us, uh, we have actively started investing for our retirement a lot earlier on in our lives, which is really good. This is the power of social media. I definitely believe a lot of people are talking about their finances, whether that's on Insta, TikTok, YouTube, definitely so many people talk about personal finance, what to do with their money, and you can definitely see that in the stats here. But the thing with social media is that we also compare ourselves with other people and everybody has a fake life on primarily Instagram and that's where you're comparing yourself to your peers and it is not ideal for your mental health or for your finances so definitely it is an internal battle just compare your life a year ago to today in terms of your finances like you are comparing yourself to your older version that is the best way for you to compare yourself in terms of finances so i hope you like this video and got something out of it this is very insightful uh to see that gen z's are actually the most ready for retirement which is really great i do feel like gen z's get a really bad rep because we definitely have we are so focused on having a good work-life balance and having fun and saving for retirement you can definitely see that we care a lot more about having fun having a good time living our life to the best we can and not just like slave away at our job so i hope you like this video and i shall see you in the next one bye